is natural ways to reduce your menstrual cycle flow. And these are actually, you know, things that I did to personally reduce my own cycle. So it's not just, I'm just throwing out stuff, you know, that just, you know, just research some stuff just to come up with. But these are actually things that I did. So the first one is exercising. Um, I hadn't exercised in a while. And so when I had first started exercising and I started, I would, I, I just like running on a treadmill to be honest, but running on a treadmill a few times out the week reduced my cycle. Oh my goodness, it was so light. I was so like just happy and, and amazed that it could even be that way for me. Like it, it made life so much easier, but you should not over exercise. Um, I will say that because losing too much body fat is not good for your hormones and your hormonal balance, you know, plays a part in the menstrual flow. And also there's a doctor by the name of Tina Moore. Um, I'll leave a link for her video in the description, but she did make a video about your hormones and weightlifting. So you guys should check that out and about why you shouldn't just go just working out and you know before you just you know know how that goes okay so the second thing that helped me and these i just want to say these are not in any type of specific order of importance but drinking more water and along with drinking more water you have to consume more vitamin c and I'm not talking about the supplements because uh, for me, the vitamin supplements, vitamin C supplements, just I didn't see a difference with them. Like I, I could not see a difference with them. Not until I ate more vitamin C. And for me, it was the citrus fruits that I did, oranges and grapefruits. I love grapefruits. I ate a, I would eat a grapefruit a day on my cycle. And instead of seven day cycles could reduce them down to five days like that's a big significance for me and the flow was oh my gosh it was so much better um it really helped slow down and along with the vitamin c because vitamin c also helps your body to absorb iron so if you're anemic it may help out also which goes into the next thing is addressing anemia if you do have anemia uh, most people think that you could just take a whole bunch of iron pills and that's supposed to do something but a lot of people really just get like constipated <laughs> or they find themselves like always having to take the iron like okay I'm, it's just an ongoing thing so along with the iron copper and zinc and I actually this is this is the iron that I take, which is the vitamin code Healthy Blood. They have one that's raw iron, but I take the Healthy Blood just because, you know, it has it has vitamin C, B6, folate, B12, and the iron in it. So it, it's like a um you know, it has a few other things in there that I like. And then for the zinc, I take the vitamin code zinc. Um, it's probably cheapest to buy it on Amazon. They sell it in the specialty stores, um, you know, like Sprouts or, well, I just know I've seen it in Sprouts. And then for the copper, copper helps your body to utilize the iron so it's like a whole system that you have to take to address the anemia and you know make sure you're eating you know your veggies and stuff and that helps out a lot but that along with the vitamin c you you should be able to tell the difference also from taking that also what i did was the lavender and chamomile tea the lavender and chamomile tea is great um it helps you know tremendously with the body period 
and you should definitely i'm always encouraging you to do your research while i'm throwing these out you can research it yourself to get more information because i'm not gonna sit here and you know try to hold you up forever with it but the vitamin c fresh is i mean not vitamin c the lavender or chamomile fresh is always better i always go to this herb store in atlanta called seven nanda they have bulk herbs like a whole bunch of herbs in jars that you can go and you know just scoop up in your little bags and stuff and take them home so i get the lavender chamomile from there and i mean it works fine you know if that's what you can get your hands on but if you can get your hands on some fresh lavender from like a garden or somebody that grows and sells it then that's even better because i went to this um i went to this lavender farm and it's called red oak just so you guys can see that red oak lavender and they just sell a whole bunch of lavender and this is grown organically it's out in Dahlonega Georgia and when I tell you this lavender tastes completely different from the lavender that I bought in the health food stores so I would definitely not suggest those little tea bags, but if that's all you can get, then you can see how it works. But I'm saying it might not be as strong as the regular one, but I know this tastes, it has like a minty, licorice freshing taste that the, the, the one that you buy in the store just does not have. If you can, you know, start growing it because those are two herbs that, you know, I think every herbalist should have. Your tampons and your pads. I changed mine to organic tampons and pads, um, especially you don't want to be using scented products because they can affect the pH and those chemicals from those tampons and pads can affect the pH and you know, get up in your vagina and your system and stuff. When your pH is affected, it can cause heavier menstrual cycles. And if you do, if you're prone to getting infections during your cycle, uh, because some of us are more prone to getting bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections, but some people, some women get them before their period, some women get them during their periods, and some get them every time after their periods. So that may be one thing that you might want to consider if you're getting rashes or irritation. Um, I mean, I started getting like rashes and stuff from the pads and once I switched, you know, cause I'm like the pads just, it, they just felt sweaty and just like irritating to me. So once I switched to organic cotton, you know, that part got so much better. And also you really, with, you know, all this advice, cleaning up your diet is like a major part in reducing your menstrual flow also you know these things will help but at the end of the day what you're putting in your body is affecting us and what you're not putting in your body is affecting you so you should definitely make sure that you're taking a good multivitamin um you know it's, it's good for us to start some people i know already have started growing their food and stuff but using healthier food sources i'm not encouraging well i'm not vegan and i don't ever plan on going vegan so i you know that's just not something that i'm interested in so i'm not going to tell you that hey you should just stop this or stop that but it, it is a proven fact that reducing you know your red meat meat intake helps with your cycles so i would suggest maybe eating more fish like salmon you know that's good with the omega-3s that you should be um taking but yeah i would just suggest maybe cutting down on it you know if you eat meat once in a day choose to eat it for either breakfast or dinner and not you know have to eat so much of it because we you don't need that much meat but those are all my ways. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned something. If you all have any other advice or things that you have done to reduce your menstrual cycles, 
please leave them in the comment section. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will be happy to answer your questions or conversate with you if you just need a friend. And please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one, okay?